Hey guys, what is up? Lefty back here again, and thanks for checking out the video. Uh, so today I want to do a quick little video about a topic about comparing both the kind of the low power variable, variable optics and also your red dot optics together. So uh, let's get right into it. So what we're going to do is go through kind of a pros and cons kind of, uh, type of section and stuff like that. Uh, it's going to be a little bit harder to compare both these optics because they are kind of used for different sort of things. But uh, I'll try to dive into it as much as possible so to give uh, somebody that's maybe looking for a red dot or maybe an LPVO um, because these have definitely gotten much more popular as the prices kind of come down. There's a lot more to choose from obviously right now. So uh, that's what I kind of want to do this. So we'll kind of go through pros and cons of each individual uh, thing. So the first one I want to do obviously when you're looking for anything uh, to buy is obviously going to be price, right? So uh, both of these things have pretty cheap uh, options and all I've seen much more, much more uh, expensive options. Your much more expensive options are definitely going to be on the LPVOs. Um, your red dots, you can get pretty goddamn good ones where the uh, the hollow suns for a couple hundred bucks, I know those are pretty pretty damn reliable. Uh, but it's going to depend on what you want, what you're going to get. Uh, obviously, I would much rather have, especially on these, I would much rather spend a little bit more uh, because especially if they're going to be magnified and stuff like that, you're going to want better optical quality and also make sure those goddamn zeros stay put. Um, so I would definitely want to be spending a little bit more on these uh, for my personal opinion because you can have uh, red dot optics that are definitely going to be a little bit more uh, reliable compared to your cheaper uh, LPVOs. Uh, just kind of what I've seen, but again, like your Holosuns, you can get for, I think, under 300 bucks with the mount and stuff like that, and they're pretty much good to go, especially in terms of battery life and stuff like that, and uh, reliability and durability, so I would definitely look into those. Um, me personally, uh, the lowest uh, amount of money I'm going to spend on a Red Dot is probably going to be your Trijicon MROs, which you can get under 500 bucks, including the mount right now. Those are pretty... Uh, pretty much good to go optics. Those glass quality is a little bit different because those have a little bit more of a blue tinge, right? Um, so it's going to depend on the glass and all this and that. Um, and this is going to be just kind of a broad scope kind of thing. I'm not going to go to each individual optic and stuff like that. But obviously, uh, Trigicon, this is the Trigicon 1 through 4. This is the Ampoint, uh, excuse me, Ampoint H1 uh, optic. Uh, this is the AccuPower line as well. They do have AccuPoint, AccuPower. Uh, one is kind of this tritium type uh, thing or kind of like the uh, the thing that the ACOG uses with the uh, the light bar. I can't and I'm just blanking on it right now. Uh, but anyways, and this one actually has a battery uh, power, a 2032, uh, I believe in there. So it actually gives you a little bit of a red dot illumination. So uh, it's going to be all across the board, all across inspections in terms of uh, reliability, price and all this and stuff and that. So just make sure whatever you get. Uh, you look through it, you like it, and you can obviously afford it. Don't go out and spend, you know, a couple thousand dollars on something you don't really need uh, just because it's the hot whiz-bang shit, right? So next thing I'm going to be talking about is obviously weight. Uh, your aim points, uh, your red dot type optics are going to be far, far less weight. And then also in terms of the balance of the rifle. So these small things right over the, basically the middle of the rifle is going to be a much more balanced uh, type weapon to maneuver in close quarters and all that shit like that. Uh, these are obviously going to be much more heavier and a little bit more cumbersome to kind of get used to. Uh, they are definitely fine and all that, but you're going to have to get used to uh, the little bit more weight and also the little bit more top heaviness of the weapon when you're kind of maneuvering with it and stuff like that. So obviously that's kind of a, a very obvious thing to be aware of, but just take that into consideration as well. Uh, one thing also is battery life. Uh, you know, your aim points, your Trigicon MROs, and the, even the Holosons have uh, roughly 50,000 hours of uh, battery life. So really, can't really beat those in terms of battery life. This one is the AccuPower. So this one does have a battery, like I said, in it. Some of them don't have any type of illumination. Some are just hardcore etched uh, reticles in there. So obviously, those definitely don't have a battery. But if you're going to compare an actual powered optics, uh, these are obviously, obviously kind of win in terms of battery life. Uh, this one I think is roughly on the highest setting is about 50 hours or something like that. I'm not 100% certain. Uh, one thing though, these do not have any type of auto shut off or anything like that. Some of your hollow suns do have an auto shut off and also kind of a uh, a uh, motion sensor to waken them back up. Uh, you, I have almost killed uh, the battery in this just by accidentally leaving it on and shit like that because I'm so used to having the A points where you just turn them on and you just forget about them. Um, this battery... It's relatively new, but when I first got this thing, I left this battery, the original battery, in it for about two and a half, three years, something like that, and it still worked fine. So this is a much more newer battery, roughly around a little bit over a year at this point. It's still going strong, so these definitely went in terms of battery life for uh, powered optics. 
So let's go into this thing. I guess I'll just kind of title shootability, uh, which one is more shootable, I suppose, and which one is obviously going to be easier to hit at range and stuff like that. So it's going to depend. Um, these are both one power, I suppose, but this one power is not a true one power, right? Uh, obviously, if you look through an aim point, whatever like that, and then you go over here into an LPVO, there is a slight bubble effect, and you are still going to get some of that scope shadow, even with a really, really good eye relief like these do have. Um, you're still going to get a little bit of that scope shadow if you're off a little bit. And also, you do have this kind of bubble uh, fisheye bubble effect. If you if you look through one, you can understand. So it's not a true one power. You do have a little bit tiny, tiny little bit of magnification there. But it's basically uh, not noticeable when you're actually doing it at speed. Um, and it might be as well because I have much more time on these as well. But uh, these are far more easier to use in terms of your CQB ranges where you're going from a low ready or high ready and snapping the safety off and taking a quick shot. These are much more easier uh, for me at least to take a shot with than this. And it might be because of the bubble effect. I'm not really sure. Um, but one thing this does have is the kind of the EOTech reticle where you have like this big outer ring and a dot in the middle. That kind of fucks with my brain a little bit because I'm much more... For my personal preference is I prefer a dot much more prefer a dot. I think the EOTech kind of reticles where you have a donut of death plus that little dot in the middle is definitely definitely usable for sure. But you just have to kind of get used to it. So when I when I first started uh, snapping this gun up, I would see that big <laughs> that big circle right, and I would actually use that to aim, and my shots were going far far low because I look at the top of that circle, and then I'm shooting way way low. So it was a little bit of a learning curve. Obviously about like 20 rounds or whatever I got over that, and I was putting them right where I wanted them to, but uh, just a little bit more hard uh, for me to use. Now, in terms of longer distance, this is where this is going to excel extremely, especially for me where I don't have the greatest of eyes. I do have astigmatism as well, I should mention. I do get a crisp reticle. That's because of the way this reticle works. I'm not 100% sure. The illumination on this, I do not get any flaring with astigmatism compared to these. Any type of red dot, red dot optic I get that little flares and little like strands coming off of it. So it's not a very crisp dot. It's more of like a, a flare effect. And with this, it's pretty it's pretty damn crisp, I will say. So I have no issues with astigmatism um, for this as well. But again, going to long range, this is far, far, far easier for me um, to hit at longer distance and stuff like that. So uh, no question. Um, that wins in terms of long distance. Uh, you know, you can easily make shots out to three or 400 yards with this but you're going to have a much better time making those shots with this. So it is kind of nice to be able to dial up the magnification and also uh, throw it back down if you need to. So I think the, the ability to kind of adapt uh, this particular setup for a certain distance is actually really, really, really nice. So you can kind of fill uh, what you need to do in that particular moment and stuff like that. So that's pretty cool. I suppose that's pretty much it. I guess the last subject obviously is going to be more durability. Just make sure uh, whatever you get, if you're going for a defensive weapon, right, for home defense or whatever, make sure the damn thing is rugged and reliable, right? So anyway, I hope this video helped uh, anybody that was looking to get in either uh, one or the other. So hopefully you can use this as a little bit of a data point and just, you know, determining your decision on which one you get. I think, honestly, whatever one you get, you're going to be happy with either because they're both very, very fun to shoot and very, very capable um, in their own right. So anyway, thank you guys for watching. Be good.